All right, guys, you asked for it. You said, Josh, you gotta review a 247 Transcend. It's the best starter camper ever. Well, your word's not mine. I'm just gonna do my best to fill in. Hey, everybody. Josh, your RV nerd here with Bish's RV. Appropriate, I suppose, that I'm wearing my Winnebago coat doing a Grand Design since Winnebago is the parent company for Grand Design. A lot of people actually aren't aware of that, neither here nor there. The 247 Bunkhouse uh, Transcend, like I said, in your own words as viewers, this is the best starter camper you've found. Now, apologies if the audio on this is a little bit wonky. It is an insanely windy Iowa day, which uh, seems to be pretty much the norm around here, but I'm gonna do my best to fill you in. Um, there's a bunch of things this does really well. Now, naturally a floor plan like this, carpetless, easy cleaning, but something I love about the Transcend series, even here in the Explore, the little brother, they always provide you uh, like a, a roof ladder. They've got a walkable roof where uh, they've got that true queen bed. They've got some big camper features that smaller campers in this size typically don't offer. But what really sets these apart from everything that I've seen and I've heard from my team across the nation is it's not the construction, it's not the features, although they, they do a good job of that. It's, it's the support they give to their dealers and their customers. If you've never had a camper before, you, you, uh, if you've seen stories online, you're not sure who to go with, Grand Design has just become virtually legendary for taking care of their customers. If you're you know wanting to try camping for the first time before you jump into some kind of mega full-time fifth wheel, this is a brand, this is a floor plan that I think is gonna take care of you very well. It fits well within half ton uh, towing capability, by the way, or if you got a big SUV because you gotta move all the kids around, this isn't something where you have to give up your daily driver necessarily just to go camping. And I gotta hand it to you guys. You know how to pick them. You guys said, Josh, you've got to review the 247 Transcend. You weren't wrong. This, uh, man, this is just a textbook example of old meets new, meshing classic camping concepts with uh, modern features and functionality. And I wish I could tell you that I, I rehearsed that, but that literally just came to me off the top of my head. So what are we looking at here? We've got a, uh, you don't have to worry about upgrading the air conditioner on this one. You've got a 14,500 BTU, a little more powerful Furion standard on these, which is kind of nice. And we're looking at a 12-volt fridge. We're going to come back and see this in more detail. But you have your choice between 12-volt and 2-way. But no matter what, you've always got a 165-watt uh, factory solar package available. And this is something that kind of went away from the RV industry. And I'm glad to see it kind of coming back. I've noticed Grand Design very good about it in the Transcend series. Just a little, whether it's going to be a shoe garage, a shelf... Um, place to put some hats, nice little welcome home spot. You can put some gloves. You've got, uh, you know, a tabletop here with some handy outlets. Like that is something that you will use every single time you camp. And, um, it, it, it's just crazy how a lot of RVs have kind of phased away from that. But what's funny is this is a very classic floor plan overall. It's just been modernized and updated and refreshed very, very nicely. But notice, like, look at the cabinetry. Something Grand Design's fantastic for. Nothing is ever just flat. Everything has a little bit of shape, a little bit of character. Like, look at the cushions um, on the sofa. The little butt side cushions right there, little butt buckets, how they just kind of wrap you up. You've got that simulated kind of cinema seat with the fold-down armrest, although you can flip that up out of the way if you want to put a uh, kiddo between you. And this car uh, camper is about as easy cleaning as it comes. It is carpetless, it is ventless, and in fact, you see the vents um, like right here, those, those black circles on the side of the sofa. Now, uh, opening all that up, you see, uh, drop down storage below that jackknife sofa. That's actually one of the kind of cool things about a floor plane like this is that under the sofa, you're gaining effectively a whole storage chest and opening things up because, you know, it's a no slide camper on a, you know what, a rainy day when you're stuck inside like crazy, that that's where this floor plane is going to really come in handy because the kids have their own bunk space back there. Um, you've got some entertainment stuff straight across from the TV right here. And then you've got a family game day situation going on, but everyone's kind of in the mix. That being said, with no slide, it can get tight in here. The good news is Grand Design also makes plenty of floor plans with slides, just in case you were curious. <laughs> so let me uh, get you over here, put you right in the driver's seat on that simulated cinema seat. Um, this is also another, I, I think, best-in-class quality. A TCL Roku Smart TV 
in what some people are going to refer to as a starter camper. The thing is, Grand Design starter class may not necessarily match up with everybody else's starter class. And no, there's nothing wrong with the table. It's a little bit of a simulated live edge, once again, just to give it a little bit of shape and character. Um, little nitpicks I have, and I talk about this frequently because a lot of campers do this. I would prefer that to be free floating table legs or give me a single drop down table leg with one, uh, like, like with a pair of brackets against that sidewall over there. But at least the table's nice and sturdy. If you need to push down on it to set yourself up, you can. Now you're looking at those cushions and if you're not, uh, happy, like saying, Hey, <laughs> you know, the 1970s called, they like their plaid back. Well, guess what, but Carol Baskin, these cushions are reversible. So you can just have a solid brown on brown on brown decor, which speaking of, that is the only thing that they're offering here. They don't give us, you know, red, blue, green like they used to in the classic days. Grand Design says, okay, here's the decor for the Transcends. Hope you love it. Kind of like the Model T. <laughs> you know, I wasn't sure about the windows off the back. And I'm going to ask you this again when we get outside. Um, I kind of wondered if they shouldn't be off the door side of the RV, but at the same time, I'm, this isn't bad. I do kind of like the visibility that it gives me. It's a little less visible from the um, sofa position, admittedly. Uh, and hey, speaking of less visible, if you'd like your bed spaces up here to be less visible, the good news is they have their own little privacy curtains. Did you see how I did that segue right there? And then down, uh, down below, I couldn't decide if I wanted to say down or doggone or whatever. But anyway, down below here, below the bunks, we've just got one heck of a wide open pooch palace in this thing. It's just all kinds of storage space. Now you might be going, well, what is that? It's not a camp kitchen. I think that's like your water heater and stuff like that in that corner over there. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's good duffel bag storage. It's maybe small dog kennel or maybe cat litter box storage. I could see it working for something like that. And for, uh, again, the rainy day kiddo entertainment survival station, we've got some household and USB outlets right there, but they are kind of shared between the two bunks. Um, you know, so you might want to in your traveling stuff, have like a, a USB extension cord or hub or something there for uh for the kiddos but man no matter where you stand in this thing you've got some nice window coverage in it don't you now if you're that girl from the exorcist uh and you're on the toilet wanting to watch tv you could do uh, a 360 owl style head spin and you'd be able to watch tv but here's another impressive class leading feature i think they may not be the only one but they're one of the very few using porcelain stools in a stick and tin camper like this and in terms of uh, how fluffy friendly is it? I think that that is pretty darn fluffy friendly. I could, I found myself very easily able to fit there. Now I'm not the biggest fluffiest person, but my point is that I never really felt like cramped for space. A little drunken octopus fight club on the wall here. And if you have no idea why I call it that, look at that thing and tell me it doesn't look like an octopus looking for a fight. You know what I mean? Got a simple small four inch power vent fan up top here. That might be something that uh, if you're like, well, I'd like a bigger fan, let us know. That's the kind of stuff we can upgrade for you. Um, it's a six and a half foot tall ceiling. So uh, if you're over 6'1", like I am, you're definitely going to be standing in that shower. I'm about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, depending on the shoes and the hat I'm wearing on a given day. Uh, so just to give you a nice little reference point there, but that is a rectangular shower, not like a big radius shower or travel trailer tub. And one of my only real knocks in this bathroom it's just open storage. I am not personally a fan of open storage. I like everything to have its own little uh, enclosure, but hey, that's just me. Now, the TV's on a single swing arm pivot right there. I, I don't know what good it's... Again, I'm standing in the bathroom, so like if I sit on the toilet and I crank around... Yeah, I guess we are toilet TV certified. I don't know why you'd really want to watch that, um, especially given the... Uh, the show that you would be putting on for the rest of your family. I'm just imagining scarring my kid for life sitting at the dinette over there. She's just looking at me like, and I'm just looking at her like, and, uh, you know, that's why we have therapists, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, both the dinette and the sofa can fold down for uh, sleepers, by the way. And a big campsite window overlooking, uh, you know, your site under the awning. That is something... That is, again, not a lot of campers in this class do very well, although no slide bunkhouses tend to do it a little bit better. 
a little bit of storage around the entertainment. That's where your uh, Bluetooth stereo is hidden away, by the way. And look at this. Drawers below the uh, dinette instead of just doors or nothing. And, you know, this is something some... You, you folks, I tell you, you're really... Um, our, our viewers never cease to impress me. I've covered a couple RVs, and I've even pointed it out where manufacturers didn't take the time to, like, stain or color that wood once they've cut it right there. Notice the Grand Design does. And the common logic that a lot of people had with that is if they're not taking the time to do the things I can see, are they taking the time to do the things that I can't see? So I, I think it, there's just a connection for peace of mind in there. Now, I mentioned refrigerators. This is uh, a uh, gas electric two-way fridge. No, no, I'm sorry. This that we're looking at is a Furion 12-volt fridge. You do have a gas electric uh, two-way option. Um, the benefit here with the 12-volt, it, it eats up more juice. Well, I guess that's not the benefit. The downside of the 12-volt is it eats up more juice. Uh, but the uh, the benefit is when you are um, you know driving down the road, it is travel safe because your vehicle powers the battery, which powers the fridge. Uh, additionally... Um, it's faster cooling and has a greater capacity. So if you're going to spend more of your time on the grid rather than off the grid, or you don't mind running a generator here or there or expanding your solar package because the factory solar won't be able to totally keep up with that, mind you. I don't mind uh, letting you know. I'm not going to oversell something. Nothing drives me crazy. Or we'll have customers call us and say, yeah, um, I bought my camper somewhere else and my battery keeps dying. And, and we find out that they were told their solar package could do more than it really would. And unfortunately, at that point, there's nothing that can fix it except spending more money. And I want to help you avoid that. I love the little touch, though. The little toe kick under the dinette right there. Just a nice, nice little thing. Um, all right. I think we pretty much got this. I think we pretty much got this. Let's uh, move our way forward here. Going into the bedroom. Now, a couple things. Motion lighting, obviously. Another drunken octopus fight club. These, uh... You know, this is your local 402 uh, Fight Club Union, whereas the other guys are from the uh, the 305, neither here nor there. But I want to point out a couple really clutch details here in the bedroom. I don't care about talking about the Drunken Octopus Fight Club Union. First of all, just a switch for a main overhead uh, lighting in the bedroom. Nice touch. Secondly, sliding pocket privacy door. Another, uh, you know, bonus feature here. And then a true queen bed. With the uh, easy lift storage down below it. Now, I get that that plywood, or I'm sorry, OSB bed deck below that doesn't look amazing. At the same time, though, it's going to do the job. And this is a little bit more price sensitive uh, segment as compared to most of the grand designs. But they're giving us, uh, again, a, a bunch of really nice convenience features there, including nice long hanging wardrobe closets. Although, if you are the claustrophobic type, I could see you feeling like you're uh, pinched in a little bit over here. Also notice that both sides of the bed have household and USB outlets. We are prepped for a TV in the bedroom, although you're definitely going to want to get an articulating swing arm. Definitely, definitely, yeah, Charlie Babbitt swing arm. And up top here, it is not a powered vent fan, but this is a non-laminated roof, meaning it's not all glued together in one chunk. You've got two lights here with power available, 12 volt power. If you wanted us to apply, or if you wanted to apply a 12 volt vent fan up fit to that, it wouldn't be hard to do. Understand, Grand Design does not cover work they didn't do. So can you do that? Yes. Is that going to be covered under your Grand Design factory warranty? No, it's not. And that is the kind of, you know, plus minus give and get info that I want you to get from our videos. And if you appreciate that, Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and if you've already done so, like our video, bundle up. Let's step outside. You don't want to open an umbrella out there. You'll be flying away like Mary Poppins. Woohoo! So let's talk towing. What do you need to handle something like this? Um, I, I think that uh, a half ton's a good default response. There are going to be some, um, like someone might say, well, I got a, I got a mid-size pickup. It's got a 7,000 pound tow rating. And I understand that the GVW of this is less than 7,000 pounds. If you're not familiar, GVW is the maximum weight of the trailer plus all cargo you can possibly load into it before it's overloaded. I don't care about just those numbers. This trailer is tall enough. It is long enough. I think it would muscle a mid-size pickup around. So a half ton or a roughly equivalent uh, SUV, like a bigger class SUV, I think are going to be the uh, the fits that you want here. And the thing, you know, Transcend, 
we we're kind of referring to this as maybe this might be your first camper, maybe a starter camper. The thing is though, they give it so much glitz and glitter. You don't feel like you're in just a starter stick and tin type trailer. Like just the whole nose of the thing, it, it looks glowing and three dimensional. That is extra thick aluminum on the front. But even the sidewall aluminum like this uh, that we're seeing over here on the right hand side, they just do it differently and it just kind of churches the place up a little bit, you know what I mean? Um, power tongue jack on the front means when you're hooking up to your uh, weight distribution system, you're supposed to crank those up and down a couple times basically to do it properly. I'm not gonna get into a full demo of that right now, but that saves you from a lot of tennis elbow and it's also a way to kind of help the kids get involved. Like, hey kids, crank that jack up, crank that down. Okay, stop, you know? Um, camping's a family affair. We're in a bunkhouse. It's nice to get everybody involved. Uh, 20 pound propane tanks instead of 30s means it's easier to change on a Sunday and they're lighter weight, but less uh, time between refills. So kind of budget that. Um, the uh, magnet holdbacks are a nice little touch here. Not slam latches, but I don't see a lot of stick and tin trailers with those. So I suppose I can't really knock it too much for that. This is pretty exceptional though. Having a, uh, a little wet bay docking station in a stick and tin trailer. And man, I'm sorry if the camera's getting jerked around. The wind is nuts out here in Iowa. I. I mean, I had no idea. I knew they had cornfields, you know, and uh, I knew the folks were a lot like Southern Michigan folks where I'm from, but the wind, oh my goodness gracious. Um, we've also got that charge controller up top uh, because this RV has a factory standard solar package, and we're gonna see and talk more about that when we get up to the roof. Whoop, um, <laughs> I got the baggage door uh, frame in the way there. Let's pop through the other side. And something that's nice when you get down in here you see that not only do they have lighting in the front pass-through compartment, which again, uh, a lot of stick and tin trailers tend to lack, they've got motion lighting on both sides, which is just a nice little convenience touch. That's one of those things that if you've never, um, <laughs> if you've never had motion lighting in an RV, it doesn't sound awesome. And then you actually have, you're like, oh, that is nice. Um, I get that this isn't their biggest, flashiest, fanciest camper. But man, it feels like there's a lot of sidewall opportunity wasted for that awning, doesn't it? It just feels like there could have been a bigger awning on this guy right there. Oh, um, just down in front of that front awning arm, there is a gas grill quick connect. It's just really tucked up under there. I don't want to miss that because that is a really handy feature when you are out there camping. Um, the speakers are a little high for my preference, but I, frankly, I just probably wouldn't use them. I would simply... I uh, bring myself a little portable Bluetooth speaker and call it macaroni. And they did something uh, interesting here. What do you think about this? Instead of windows on the door side of the bunks, they put windows over here off the back of the RV. I don't know that I like one more or less than the other. I'm just curious, what do you think about it more than anything? Now you might be looking at this and going, wait a minute, uh, can you even walk in this thing? There's no ladder on it. And the thing is, there is. Um, just because of the way the rear structure of this wall worked out, they went with a side mount ladder. Uh, so what's kind of cool is, yes, it is a walkable roof and they're just giving you a different way of getting to it. Um, before we climb up there though, one thing I do want to do is take a little bit of a knee and show you down here under the skirt line. Now, a couple things. If you're new to camping, I don't know, maybe you're not used to looking under stuff, but having an enclosed and forced air heated belly in this class is exceptionally uncommon. And it's one of those little things that, it's a it's another factor in why this is not necessarily the least expensive stick and tin trailer you might find, but it is potentially one of the, uh, you know, the best thought out or best equipped that you might find for your personal needs and preferences. That heated belly there might be a really big factor for you. Not to mention, just when the underbelly is skinned, it does offer a, uh, a measure of protection um, from, uh, you know, critters and, and stuff getting thrown up at your tanks or anything like that. Um, the other thing is, it does have a full black tank flush. And, oh crap, there was one other thing I was gonna tell you, but my train of thought done went off the rails. I don't know, to the roof! And while we're up here on the roof getting blown away by the wind, we have the perfect opportunity to check out their 165 watt roof solar package on these. That is a standard item now on every single uh, Grand Design Transcend that will operate as a very aggressive uh, battery tender, 
but if you're going to be unplugged for a while, you want to run some lights in your fans, that will pretty much keep up with things. If you want a boondock, you'd be better off with the two-way fridge. Um, if you want to stick with the 12-volt fridge and boondock, you're going to want to bulk up the, uh, the kit a little bit, and wouldn't you know it, we got people back here that can help you with that stuff. Crazy, right? Now, this little guy is something that I called wrong before. Um, I, I said, why is there a TV mount right there and there's not a matching TV swing arm on the inside? That was on a previous video. Um, I've, that could be used as a swing arm mount. There's actually different things you can get to attach to that. But the primary purpose of it on this camper is a flag holder. So you can fly the stars and stripes out there when you reach your campsite, or maybe you have a custom little flag like, hey, come camp with the winters or whatever. Maybe you got a pineapple flag. I don't know, no judgment. I don't care how you roll, whatever works for you. <laughs> One of these days I'm gonna get in trouble for that, I bet. <laughs> in the meantime though, let's have a little fun. It's camping, baby. Let me know what you think of her. Um, if you appreciate where we show you the ups and the downs, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And until next time, folks, take care, stay safe, have fun. Best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.